Hey, so in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the entire Kaleidos Make Your Escape collection. Now this collection includes an eyeshadow palette, two blush duos, three highlighters, one lip gloss, and two sponges. I forgot to mention in the intro, but there's also an eyeshadow primer in this collection. I do review this in the video, but my dumbass just forgot to mention it in the intro. This collection was sent to me in PR by Kaleidos. Thank you so much to Kaleidos for sending these items to me in PR. They are not paying me to make this video or anything like that. I am going to be completely honest with my reviews because I have tested out this collection thoroughly and um, I have thoughts. In this video I will be talking about the price of everything, I will be doing swatches of every single product and I'll do some comparisons as well. So if you are curious and you just want to see one specific product, I'll put a table of contents on the screen right here giving you timestamps of where to go in the video. If you just want to see the palette or you just want to see the swatches of the highlighters, stuff like that. I've also written out a lot of notes because I want to be as thorough as possible in this video. So anyways, let's start off by talking about the Escape Pod palette, the big mama of the collection. This palette retails for 42 US dollars or 34.04 pounds. I'm going to be giving prices both in US dollars and in British pounds because I live in the UK and that currency is relevant to me. However, if you live elsewhere, you might want to convert the prices. But anyways, this is what the palette looks like right here. It has hollow packaging, which I really enjoy. It is slightly thicker, as you can see, thicker than other Kaleidos palettes. For reference, I'll show you the Futurism palettes. All Futurism palettes look like this, just with different coloured packaging. Mine's a bit scuffed because it's been travelling with me a lot, but you can tell. A bit thick. She a bit thick though. And the palette opens up like so. There are nine mattes and six shimmers, so almost a 50-50 split. Let's talk about the metallics first, since that's what immediately caught my eye with this palette, and you can even tell on camera, like, how reflective these look. From what I've tried, the metallics in this palette are the exact same formula as the Electro Turquoise palette. They are really high shine and do have glitter in them, however, the only downside to these metallics is that they do leave glitter fallout. Now, I have used these metallics in multiple looks. I've actually recreated a look that I have done previously. I first did this type of look with the two purples in here, the two purple metallics, and this time I did it with these two shades. And you can tell they're really high shine, really reflective. I am wearing this palette on my eyes today, forgot to mention. I always do my eyes before my base every single time. That's just how I normally do my makeup. However, with a makeup remover doesn't completely remove the sparkles, so you will have little glitter sparkles on your face. And whatever sparkle that is on my face that my makeup remover doesn't get rid of, it does get covered with foundation and concealer. So for me, it's not the biggest deal. However, if you are not a fan of glitter sparkles on your face or you do your foundation first, that's something to keep in mind with these metallics. Now let's talk about the mattes. I don't think these mattes are the same formula as Kaleidos' regular matte formula. From trying them out and comparing the two palettes, they don't feel like the same formula. Now, I do want you to bear in mind that is from me just basing it solely on application. I haven't compared the formulas between these mattes and the other Kaleidos mattes. These need to be built up. Yes, they are pretty pigmented from the get-go, but they do need a little bit of building. And with that, I have noticed that with some of these mattes, you can risk over-blending and losing the colour on the lid. For an example, if I blend these two browns together, if I blend too much, it will they will just blend together and slightly blend away, and it could potentially look like I just used one eyeshadow. A really good example of this is when I did this look right here. This was from my Three Looks One palette, which my footage got deleted, but I still have the look photos. In this look, I am using both the coral shade and the orange shade. Can you tell a difference on the lid? I'm wearing the orange on the inner portion of my crease and the coral shade carnival on the outer portion of the crease. Can you tell a difference between the two? I didn't think so. You can work with it and I have made these mattes work and they're not terrible. I'm not saying that they're terrible. They, you just need to work with them a bit carefully. However, big, big however. Exoplanet is kind of like a cornflower blue, like a deeper cornflower blue, and it looks really beautiful in the pan. Like, in the pan it looks bright, it looks bold, 
However, this quickly becomes a patchy mess. It's hard to blend. It also oxidizes on my lid and turns gray, which I have... I haven't found that with a shadow from Kaleidos before. I have found with this type of blue in particular, it's more likely to happen. And I have worked with eyeshadows, blue shadows specifically, that turn a bit gray on the lid when you over blend them. And I wasn't expecting that from Kaleidos, I'm gonna be honest. I was expecting like just a beautiful, beautiful blue, bright blue. This is one of those shades that you pack on your lid and then don't blend it. If you blend it, then I have tried to use this in so many looks. I have tried just placing it on my lid with my brush and then slight, like, tiny, tiniest bit, the slightest blending, and it just turns grey. I've tried different brushes, I've tried different techniques, but no matter what I do, this shade just doesn't work for me. I just want to add right here that I do know a few people that have this palette and they have said that that exoplanet has worked completely fine for them. They've not had the same issues as me. So I think that there is a consistency issue with just that shade. I haven't found anybody that has said anything negatively about the rest of the mattes. So I think it's just that one shade that could be a dud in some palettes. And I think for me, I got a bit of a dud. Other things to note is that this shade Flamingo does stay in the lid and it is slightly drier compared to the other mattes, which I do expect from a hot pink. Hot pinks are typically more drier. And my last few notes, I do want to mention shades that I think are very similar in this palette. Tango and Carnival, like I mentioned earlier, they look very, very, very similar on the lid and I don't see the need for having both of them in this palette. I wish they would have swapped out I feel like they should have swapped out Tango for like a green or something to go with these green shades. And speaking of greens, I think that these two greens, this one is called Galactic Gala and this one is Saturnalia. In the pan, they do look kind of similar. And on the lid, there is a difference, but the difference is so minuscule that you can't really tell. So I don't think they should have included both greens in this palette. With all that said, again, this is 42 US dollars, so it's not a cheap palette. The packaging is really nice. I love the quality of the metallics. The mattes, hit or miss. I'd say if the color story calls to you and the price isn't too bad, then I'd say go for it. It's worth a shot. However, would I have purchased this with my own money? That is the real, real question. I think I would have purchased this palette with my own money. However, I think I would be a bit more disappointed in the mattes because obviously, it's different when you spend your own money than getting it as a gift. I'm absolutely overjoyed with the metallics. I love the metallics. I actually reached in the, into this palette specifically for the metallics. It's a good palette, but it's not my favorite. So I think on a scale of one to five, if I had to rate it out of five, I would give it, I would give it a four. I would give it a four or a 3.75. It's kind of funny because as I'm editing this, I'm kind of noticing that I'm kind of being kind of harsh on the palette. <laughs> like, gen I actually really enjoyed the palette. I've used it quite a lot. I think I've done like, what, six looks at this point. They're all on my IG if you're curious. Um, I really like the palette a lot. It's just the color story isn't my absolute favorite personally and the mattes are a bit iffy, but overall I really like the palette. I mean, yes, I didn't give it the most glowing review, but I wanted to be realistic. I didn't want to just gush about it just because, oh my god, I got in PR. Oh my god, it's amazing. Like, no, I'm going to be realistic because I want you guys to know where your money is going towards and that kind of thing. You get me? Next up are the Lo-Fi Blush Duos. These are the first blush products that Kaleidos has ever made. And with that being said, these are really great. So far, I really like them. These retail for 18 US dollars each or 14.59 pounds. In both of these blush duos, there's a matte shade and a kind of more blush topper shade. And there's also a mirror, which is quite nice. I'm actually wearing the Lo-Fi Peach on my cheeks today, and this is actually my favorite of the two of them. I'm wearing both shades in the palette, so you might be able to see a little hint of the blush topper. A little hint. I didn't want to put too much on. These are both long-lasting. They don't fade on my cheeks. They are nicely pigmented. They're not too pigmented, and they're 
not not pigmented they're like right in the middle they're really easy to work with they're nice i can see these working for a bunch of different people however there's a big however with this one. The Peach Duo I can see working on fair to medium skin tones. I'm not too sure how this will work on deeper skin tones. I think this one is more likely to work on deeper skin tones than the Rose one. I'm holding it upside down. Well done, Sky. As much as I really enjoy the Rose one, this shade is definitely a highlighter on my skin tone and it's really, really pretty, this shade Bloom. It's kind of like, it's got like a gold to pink duochrome. So like on camera, it looks pink. But when I look at it from this angle, it's gold. It's very pretty. You might be able to see it here, actually. It looks kind of gold there. And then when I put it in the light, it's pink. This is a beautiful highlighter on my skin tone. However, you might be able to tell <laughs> just by looking at them in the pan. This strictly only works for fair to light skin tones. Definitely no, no one darker than me. No one darker than me can wear this. When I swatched this duo on my mum, it looked ashy. It looked ashy on my mum's skin tone and I don't see this looking good on anyone darker than me. Which is unfortunate because I feel like both of these duos, let me hold them up side by side, I feel like both of these duos, like, they look pretty light. They look pretty light to me. I really hope Kaleidos comes out with more blush duos, definitely some deeper shades because this, this isn't this ain't it. I really hope this is just the start of them putting out blush duos and they come out with more because we definitely need some depth here. Where We need some more depth. Oh, and I forgot to mention that in this peach duo, this shade right here called Igari, it's a peachy pink to a gold shift as well. This one isn't as metallic as the shimmer in this duo, but it is nice. This one I can use as a blush topper, however, for this shade Bloom, I can only use that as a highlighter. It would look a little bit weird if I used it as a blush topper, at least in my opinion. So what are my thoughts on these? Well, for about 18 US dollars and about 15 pounds each, I really like these. I think they're really worth the money. I would definitely would have purchased the Peach Duo on my own. I don't think I would have purchased the Rose Duo, personally, because, I don't know, it doesn't really speak to me. I do like mauve blush, but it's not really... I don't know, it's not really my thing. However, I do love how this looks on my skin tone. It does look very pretty, but the peach one definitely is the one that speaks to me. And I think the one that will speak to most people. Moving right along to the highlight shades, Kaleidos have brought out three new highlighters with this collection. They already had the Space Age highlighters originally, they had six shades, but now they've come out with three new ones. Now these retail for 14 US dollars or £11.35. Kaleidos have sent me the whole Space Age highlighter collection, every single one of them, and I will say there are different formulas within the Space Age highlighters. So for an example, Diamond Dasher and Moon Cruiser have that more glitterly glitterly okay glittery glittery why is that hard to say Gl glittery glitter with my accent it doesn't work glittery reflectiveness to them so for an example let me swatch diamond dasher i know you've seen a close-up swatch but you can kind of see on my finger how it's really reflective and how on my hand it's really bright and you can see the individual shimmer particles however when i swatch let's say my juvia's place highlighter. This is the Tribe highlighter in volume 3. This one just has a sheen to it. There's no glitter. I just wanted to compare these just so you could see. This one does have glitter in it and this one is just a sheen. There is no glitter. Diamond Dasher and Moon Cruiser share the same formula as Skywalker from their original launch as well as Laser Glazer. So all of these have that same really sparkly glitter reflect to them. I'm actually wearing Diamond Dasher on my cheeks today and you can see how blinding and reflective it is. These are super intense, like if you don't want an intense highlight, stay away from these. Now Mars Melter, this one is one of their duochrome highlighters. This has the same formula as Solar Sailor and Comet Catcher from their original launch. This one looks white in the pan but it does have like a red to peach shift to it. It's really, really pretty. That may sound intimidating, but I feel like this out of all of their duochrome highlighters that they've come out with, this one is the most natural out of the duochromes. It's very pretty and it does have a white base to it. So I'm not too sure if it would look ashy on deeper skin tones, 
I feel like if you blended this out, you could make it work. And even though this seems like the most intimidating out of the three of these, this one is the most natural out of the three, in my personal opinion. The duochrome, because especially if you have like a warmer or red undertone to your skin, it really does kind of just melt into your skin and just look like a little bit, like a little bit like an alien glow, but still kind of natural. I don't know, it's really interesting. I really like this one. And I just realized that I completely forgot to talk about these colors. So Diamond Dasher. This one is like a pink and gold shift to it. This one is what I'm wearing on my cheeks today, like I mentioned. This is definitely like a pink champagne. That That's the one. Pink champagne with like pink glitters to it. This one I thought was extremely similar to Skywalker and I was a bit concerned because I was thinking, are they discontinuing Skywalker? They better not, because I will, I will write an angry email. And in the pan, they do look extremely similar. They do. However, Skywalker has more of a blue shift to it. Like it's got like a clear base and then it shifts bright blue with blue glitters in it. However, Moon Cruiser, this has like a metallic, what is it? Lavender, like purple to blue. So this one has purple in it as well. Skywalker strictly just has blue in it. This one has blue and purple. I will do comparison swatches right here of all of the highlighter shades. I compared Diamond Dasher to Star Surfer from the original launch, and I compared Moon Cruiser to Skywalker, and then I compared Mars Melter to Comet Catcher from the original launch. I really enjoy Kaleidos' highlighter formula. They are one of my favorites. And would I have purchased these if they weren't sent to me? 100% yes. I love the highlight formula. I think I would be hesitant to purchase Mars Melter because I wouldn't know how often I would wear it. But now that I have it, I wear this one a crap ton. <laughs> I really enjoy this color. And obviously Moon Cruiser is definitely my favorite. I would have 100% bought this one. Diamond Dasher, maybe, potentially not. I probably wouldn't have purchased this because it is, it's more of a natural toned highlighter, even though it is extremely intense. It's definitely not natural on the cheeks, but it is more of like a natural color. Also, I forgot to mention that they did reformulate Ray Rider. This is actually the old formula and I haven't actually opened the new Ray Rider that they sent me because I didn't want to have repeats in my collection. So I'm going to be giving that one away to my friend. But I have seen that some people have said that Ray Rider has slightly changed in formula color as well, but not too much of a difference. I apologize that I'm not gonna be showing you guys the new one, but I didn't wanna make makeup go to waste. Next up is the lip gloss in this collection. This is the Lucid Lip Gloss in the shade Hypnotize. Now, I have never tried Kaleidos' gloss formula. They do have other glosses. I think they have three other shades. I haven't tried those before. I was going to buy them, but then I thought, Sky, you need to calm down, because I'm I am a gloss goblin. I'm a self-confessed gloss goblin. This retails for 16 US dollars or £12.97. I'm just gonna say £13 because rounding up, we love maths. This gloss formula is really, really nice. It feels like a lip balm on your lips, almost. Like a lip balm, lip oil type consistency. More so lip balm than lip oil, but you catch my drift. It has a slightly thinner consistency and I don't find this gloss to be long wearing like the Fenty ones and we all know how much I stand Fenty gloss bomb. This one isn't that long wearing, which means you'll have to apply it more often throughout the day which, you know, I don't mind for a gloss. I prefer it to be long wearing like Fenty so I don't have to worry about it because, but gloss is gloss. Gloss will wear down. However, this is really moisturizing on the lips and anytime I reapply it throughout the day, it just feels like I'm applying a lip balm, which is so nice. There is also no scent or taste to these. Let me just double check. No, no scent. This gloss, it is like a darker berry gloss, although it is pretty sheer on the lips. You only get a slight tint of color. However, on camera, it looks like purpley berry, but then also it's got this gold duochrome to it. Like from this angle where I'm looking at it, it looks gold, but on camera, it just looks like berry purple. It's really cool. And it does have blue, purple and gold glitters to it. So if you don't like shimmer in your lip gloss, then you won't be a big fan of this. You can tell that there's glitter in it. However, it's not like chunky. You don't feel it on your lips. You don't feel like that gritty texture. It's really nice, it's really smooth. I really like this lip gloss a lot and I actually will be purchasing more of Kaleidos' glosses in the future. Would I have purchased this on my own? 100%, yeah.
I just realized in my intro I completely forgot to mention the tone activator eye primer which was also sent to me because it was in my little makeup area over to the side and I forgot to take it out. I do apologize but this is the tone activator eye primer. This retails for 10 US dollars or £8.10. This has a colored base to it. It's kind of like a peachy beige tone. It's almost my skin tone a little bit deeper However, it's not thick on the lids. It cancels out the veins on my eyes, which is so nice because usually in order for me to do that, I have to use concealer, but this is definitely not thick in the slightest. Whenever I use concealer as an eye primer, mm, mm, it just makes my lids look chunky and cakey. And even though it does cancel out any like veining on my eyes, it just, it just makes my eyeshadow look a bit chunky. And we don't really like our eyeshadow looking chunky. Whenever I use this, I've noticed that my eyeshadow looks more vibrant when I've used it. It does prevent creasing. And also it keeps on eyeshadow on all day. I haven't had any, I haven't noticed any creasing, any fading whenever I've used this. I also have oily eyelids, so that's another thing to keep in mind. I really, really, really like this eye primer. I think it is now my absolute new favorite eye primer, like 100%. This has overtaken Milani Stay Put eyeshadow primer. I like that it has a tint. I like that it's long wearing. It is slightly tacky when you place it on your lid, but it grips to your eyeshadow so nicely. I really like this. I really hope that they come out with more shades of this tone activator eye primer, like some maybe some deeper shades for deeper skin tones because I can see that this specific color could look a little bit strange on some people. Obviously you're laying eyeshadow on top of it, but you know, it's good to have more shades. It's never a bad thing, especially when it's a tinted eye base. I feel like tinted eye bases should have multiple shades, like some for fairer skin tones, some for deeper skin tones. You know what I'm saying. And last but certainly not least are the sponges that come in this collection. I believe these are specifically called the Soft Server Makeup Blenders, which is such a cute name, Soft Server. These also retail for 10 US dollars or £8.10, and you can only buy them in a duo. You, can, you can't you can buy them separately, which I guess is a good and a bad thing because I feel like 10 US dollars for two sponges is pretty good. That breaks down to about $5 per sponge. I hope that Kaleidos can eventually sell these separately because I can see a lot of people maybe not enjoying this shape. However, this shape is actually my favorite one. This has two flat edges to it and kind of like a rounded bottom. I really like this for blending out my foundation. Well, tinted moisturizer. I don't wear foundation really, but I love using this shade to just blend everything out. And also you can use this for con- if you do contouring and baking, I personally don't, but this could like give you a really sharp edge to it because of how flat it is. They're not too hard and they're not too soft. <laughs> They don't absorb too much when they're wet and they do double in size. This one is also the same shape as the Real Techniques sponge and I'd say they're really good. They're just as good as the Beauty Blenders. I feel like with makeup sponges, it's hard to say that you would buy an expensive sponge because you know, it's a sponge. But these are definitely really good quality and I think for the price, they're also really affordable. So I would definitely recommend these sponges if you're in the market for some indie sponges. And that my friends is my entire review on the Escape collection. Make your escape collection. I completely forgotten the name for a second. And yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And do let me know if you have picked up anything in this collection and what are your thoughts. I'm curious to hear what other people think of this as well. You can follow me on my social media. I have two Instagram accounts. I live stream on Twitch three times a week and my Twitter are all linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!